Friends of Mort Service and Repair, welcome back to the shop. Here we got that big old Briggs 24 horsepower. This is kind of the first iteration, uh, or the first or second iteration of the Intex series. Um, good engine when it first came out. Um, but I we're going to tear this guy down and show you the big differences between the Briggs & Stratton Intec and Pro Series engines and your Kohler engines. First of all, this is all the oil we pulled out of her. Um, that's not much more than a half quart, and this engine needs about one and three quarters of a quart to, to be full. But uh, also, I don't think it's supposed to be the consistency of honey. So, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm willing to bet that uh, we probably got some nice galling going on in there. Well, whilst I grab me a paper towel here to wipe my fingies off, or at least wipe the gloves off, because we're going to be trying to not make as big a mess as possible here. Now, we will get to taking it apart and start showing you the inner workings of this. But I'm also going to take, take and reuse some of the parts on here because the carburetor is still good. I can clean that up and reuse that another engine. There's things like the starter and other things that you just you don't want to see thrown away. Give it, also give my customers a chance at a cheap, slightly cheaper price than brand new. So I'm going to start tearing this down and we'll bring you back. Well, we may have also found one of the reasons why this engine failed. We have ourselves a nice little mouse nest here. And uh, this is, this being an air-cooled engine, you definitely need it to be breathing enough for it to function properly. So if you guys store your machines out in a shed or something like that, chances are you might have a rodent of some sort trying to move in. So if I were you, I would definitely take your blower housing off of your machine in the springtime just to make sure you didn't have a rodent move in and try and set up shop if you will because uh, otherwise you can run the risk of locking up a piston due to overheating or you could run the risk of over or burning up your oil so let's keep tearing her down one good carbonator off the engine and yes, this engine definitely had seized up at one point. You can see that spot right there. That is galling. I just wiped it off my glove. But uh, you can see there is definitely some scoring on the inside of this cylinder here. And this engine was running rich. Holy cats. That, I have, n <laughs> I have not seen that kind of buildup on a piston cylinder or on a piston before that's something else anyway we'll tear down more into the meat of the crankcase here we'll get the flywheel off and we will bring you back for more on this briggs engine we got a new day because the, the rest of the day on uh, yesterday got away from me as i could say the word day a whole bunch of times in one sentence proof i'm proof i'm human and need and need a few more than one take but um day got away from me yesterday so i got into call it a day after that last bit but uh now we're gonna get back into this guy you know take the starter off and hopefully we can turn the bottom side top wise or pull the flywheel off got my my snap on ready to go for pulling the flywheel off let us see what we got looks like we're gonna have to pull the flywheel off to get at that this heat shield right here so we're gonna do that here real quick Fan. I'm a fan of that. Right into the art bin. That's the art bin. Anyway, we are going to have to get a monster of a socket to get that guy off. Let's see if my biggest will fit. It will. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I just happen to have an inch and a quarter socket on on this big set and i know i'm gonna get people down in the comments section your sockets aren't impact rated you know what <laughs> clearly they do the job so uh-huh i see how we can. must exploit there we go whoa 
would have been bad. Not really. It would have been humorous. Right. Use the hammer. Hammer burr as a prop. Alrighty. We're in lock shin. Oh, yeah. Oh, got oil on me. Look at that. Would be why she was a little low on oil. The, uh, Crank journal seal was leaking goodly. So that would definitely be one of your causes for a lack of oil in the crankcase. Alrighty. So here's your camshaft. This is again for Briggs Intec 24 horsepower 724 cc engine. It's pretty good, good cam. Got a fair bit of lift on there. This camera would focus. There we go. Yeah. Now, some of you might be like, why is it hollow down in the middle? Well, that is actually for lubrication purposes. So, set the cam down. If we come over to the, the bottom side of the block. You'll notice we got the strainer here and the oil pump here. Oh, phone, phone's ringing. Well, I got three C's in my life that need to be taken care of. And in this order. Coffee, customer then we can get to the camera and unfortunately haven't had much of the first and most important C, coffee so we got some on the shop pot right now we'll get the shop cup over here in a little bit just got the customers all taken care of and now we're back to the camera so whilst the coffee is a brewing anyway we were we were back here and you'll we got the hollow camshaft and like i said that's for lubrication purposes now the teeth on the end of the camshaft there actually drive the oil pump here in Kohler or Kohler engines it's independent a little thing or a little pump that runs on its own gear that connects direct to the gear on the crankshaft then that flows oil throughout the entire engine now one of the big things that that or big differences is that in Kohler's you usually have a balance shaft journal or a balance shaft and balance shaft journal somewhere in the base of the engine here commonly found in the horizontal or the vertical shaft single cylinder engines that because they they're when you got that much rotating mass on one cylinder you're going to have lots of vibration so when you can have a shaft to balance it all out you're all good to go but you'll notice that we got a little hole right in here make sure it's in frame yep that little guy and that is actually you'll notice that oil filter goes right here framing comes out of the pump to the oil filter gets filtered comes into the crankshaft journal that will then sling oil around the engine and the big benefit about that is that it will also run through the innards of the engine and then that could have been worse and i'm leaking honey oil all over the place anywho now got that somewhat cleaned up we'll get the oil later but it will come through a channel up to the camshaft journal run through the camshaft back to the oil pump basically kind of slinging oil here there and everywhere but You'll recall this is a vertical shaft engine. So by it putting oil all the way up there, that's putting oil up at the top of the engine where it can sling, sling the oil all around the engine, getting adequate lubrication. When you don't have that kind of lubrication, you run the risk of not having, oh, tappets, also known as lifters, but, but you run the risk of your your crank journal, the thing that that the pistons hold on to, or the piston connecting rods hold on to, and your cam journal running dry. And that is what causes engines to explode. Conversely, your <laughs> what I like to call the party police, um, jokingly, jokingly, uh, this governor, if this were to be deleted and removed and nothing else done, 
then that the high rate of speed is also what could cause an engine to explode. Let me pull out the pistons and we'll come right back. Plus, coffee's done. And of course, the shop cup. The ubiquitous shop cup. It's a gift that keeps on giving. You fill it up, you get a little extra kick. <sighs> coffee. Can't live without it. His ADD brain would go nuts if I didn't have any coffee, any coffee to keep it, keep her moving. Shameless plug for the Manitowoc minute right there. Anyway, we're gonna get the these connecting rods off, get the pistons out. We'll show you guys those, and we'll do a compare and contrast of the Kohler versus Briggs and Stratton piston wise. All right, now that we got the engine torn down, the bench cleared off, I wanted to go through exactly why I believe Kohler is a far superior engine. This is, this is, we got side-by-side -side comparisons out of the Briggs Intec and the Kohler Command Series. This is out of a ECH 749. It is a 26 horsepower, 747 cc engine. So slightly bigger than the Briggs, but I want to show you some quality differences. Ah, sorry, God, I had a slug of coffee. Anyway, so the first thing you will notice right off is the gear. The gear difference is enormous. First of all, the Kohler is made out of one giant billet of steel. This one, I'm not certain if it. this is aluminum. 589, that's the stamps that are on there. Someone, not, someone smarter than me down below in the in the comments section. Give, shout, give me a shout if you if you know what that means. Anyway, so solid solid block of steel, cut out CNC. I, I get where they're coming from, making, giving it a little more, a little less work to do with lightness, rotating assembly, but you're sacrificing strength of the gear there. So we look at the side now. We got straight cut versus slant cut gear. A lot more effort goes into making a slant cut gear like this. You are get, definitely getting, you're gonna be spending a lot more for a Kohler engine based on that alone. They cost in the two difference in the cams. I, I, I haven't priced any either of these parts out, but I would imagine they'd be pretty expensive. Now, one thing I didn't quite notice until I looked, I had him sitting here like this, but he look closely here at the oiling passages. <laughs> the Kohler is nice and centered. <laughs> the bricks and stratton is cambered off into the rhubarb. <laughs> it's not even center. I, I, is it? Okay, it's centered on the other end. I would hope so, especially since that's the oil pump drive side. But I don't know. I I, I did. I never would have guessed that uh, the the oil port on this end of the camshaft would be so different or be so askew. Next thing is just the shaft beef factor. Look at like you got your Briggs. We'll pull out the old calipers here because this is, I'm actually curious about how much thicker we are. Got my handy dandy calip calipers. Oh, need zero, there we go. So we got it in fractions because that's easier for my brain. Eh, we'll switch it over to the old inches and so girth of our camshaft we'll call it half an inch for the sake of argument just and that's just the shaft now girth of our Kohler shaft now you see it's machined down on the ends to fit in the cam journals but you go with the actual shaft itself boy howdy is there a bit of a difference there one inch in front almost 1.1 inches across now so you got so much bigger let's have a look at the, the oiling port oiling port is a little under a quarter of an inch in diameter on the Kohler 
Oops, wrong direction. It's all it's over a quarter of an inch. You're moving it may not seem like a whole lot, but you are moving a lot more oil through something that is 7,000 or seven hundredths of an inch larger than this guy. Now, here's another thing that I definitely want to point out. This Briggs cam has these cam lobes can be moved on the shaft. These are not one piece. They're, they can be moved around. I suppose if you wanted to, you could take this guy and turn it into a racing cam, adva maybe advance the lobe a little bit. I don't know. But you look at this. It's one milled piece. They took the time to mount this to a lathe and turn it with sanders perfectly timed to get the exact lift point and that's just a cam i've been talking for five minutes 30 seconds at least by according to the camera and i've just been talking about the cams Kohler wins that battle hands down oh keep the briggs and parts with the briggs parts now let's go pistons so so just looking at it right off again so we got a slightly larger piston with the Kohler not much but slightly nope nope no one outside but you can see Kohler like Briggs this one is dished so like obviously the Kohler is dished as well you can see it very clearly but you can't quite see it with the Briggs but it is definitely dished dished a lot less than the Kohler and you could make the argument, oh, you get more compression that way, a little, little more pop out of it. True. But you just, it, it's so subtle. I, I, I'm not quite certain about, about our, the thickness of metal there. So let's, now let's look at our, our connecting rods. Holy cats. Kohler, Briggs and Stratton. I don't know about you, but uh, to me, it looks like the Kohler's got a little more meat to her. <laughs> let's, let's pull out the old calipers again here because I'm I'm dying to know. So, so thickness of crank journal two point six or point two six. So, just a wee bit over a quarter of an inch. Kohler. 3.9 wow there's just it there, you can visibly see that there is more meat on the connecting rod for the Kohler now you got a little wider connecting rod here on the on the Briggs framing you goof all right yeah. yep I I'm too late I'm too lazy to do all the fancy dancy editing but anyway you can see this guy is definitely wider, but thickness factor. Let's have a look at our rod girth. Seven point or er, seven tenths, roughly. Kohler. So not much more on the thickness factor, but I would trust this rod to hold up to the abuse a lot, lot longer. Let's have a look at our skirt, our piston skirts here. So you can see there's different, there's different shapes. I mean, you got kind of a more squared off oval. You got a more of a true oval here. So I, if I had to theorize why that is, I'm guessing the oval is probably a little easier to cast than a squared off oval. But I, that, again, that's me just speculating. If like, if you know, if you actually know for sure, down below in the comments, please. I, I'd love to love to hear hear what you have to say. Actually, well, down below in the comments. <laughs> I'm off to the side. You guys are centered. Anyway, so we're 0.127 on the thickness of that skirt, and at the thinnest point on this one. 
because you can see there's a little thinner spot right there. So that one is nine hundredths in a in change, a thicker spot of the skirt. 17 17 hundredths and change so you get a lot you get along with it sorry about that there the phone battery was getting a little low yes for those of you curious i do record on my phone anyway so let's see if we can get a couple more measurements on here so wrist hole the hole for the wrist pin is on the collar six and there, well, you see it there, but let's see for the Briggs. So, sl slightly smaller, not much. And let's see if we can deduce roughly how, so the thickness of the wrist pin for the, so about, about two tenths of an inch for the, for the uh, girth on, or the thickness on the wrist pin for the, Briggs. Yeah, about the same for the collar. So basically, all in all, comparable in comparable in overall pistone stuff, but you definitely have more metal on this piston. And just kind of looking at it, it looks like we might have a thicker, I don't really have a good way to, I don't have an adapter for my calipers to kind of clamp on that thing. But, um, no, oh, shoot, forgot this old method. So, so, oh, phone's ringing again. Woohoo, more customers on the way. And just remember. No coffee, no worky. <sighs> so like I said, my three C's. I got customer, or the coffee, customers, then the camera. I got, got my next customer on the schedule there. So let's see. So we got about in, almost an inch and three quarter total piston length. Now we'll get our depth here. Holy cats. I did did I do that right? So one point seven minus one point two so point four five an of an inch thick between this surface and this surface. <laughs> I've never measured that before. Holy cats. Let's look at the Briggs because, because why not? So similar, 1.78 on the skirt. Wow. It's not even a quarter of an inch thick on this piston. Holy cats. Um, that is extremely telling. Um, you are definitely getting a far superior piston in the Kohler Command engine. This makes me want to tear down a, a Kohler 7000 series uh, or a Confident series engine. We'll, we'll get we'll get one of those at some point here, but but right now we'll just do the the Briggs and Kohler comparison. God, I'm I'm speechless. There is there's just so much better piston with the Kohler. I mean, it, I could probably or I told you I probably told you coming in that it, that I felt like I prefer I definitely do prefer Kohlers over Briggs and Stratton, but that's wow. We will move on to the heads now. So, Kohler, Briggs. So, like I said earlier in the video, we have our differences in valve or in lifters. So, we got regular tappet lifters on the Briggs that you set the valve lash for. 
with the Kohler command engines, they are hydraulic lifters. So you don't have to set the valve lash for them. It does it all on its own. Really nice, really handy. And these, I just kind of glancing at them, it looks like you, I would, I can't say I would quite put one set of rockers better than the other. 0.13. No. Are you serious? They're five, five one hundredths of an inch thicker on the Kohler. You're seeing it on my calipers. I'm. <laughs> At first, I thought I was being biased with that, but no. Wow. There's a lot more meat on even just the rockers for the valves. Now let's turn them, turn the bottom side topwise. And first of all, we got, I don't know what the heck this is. Holy cats, this Briggs engine was running super rich. Um... I'd, I'd be curious to know how, how this engine was running before it finally let go or, or before, before it finally seized up the last time. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. You definitely, I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know what this goofy dome shape thing is in here, but interestingly enough, the Kohler has kind of created like their own hemi head where they because like here it's hemisphere or hemi shaped but right here it's flat so i talked to one of my auto mechanic friends he said that this you could classify this as a hemi and because it's kohler and i really like kohlers i'm gonna call it a hemi <laughs> that's my first little bias there anyway this i would not call a hemi uh, i i don't know what i would call that besides goofy um, but let's, I want to see your valve size difference. Again, 747, 724 cc, respectively. So 747 cc, 724. Let's see about our valve size. Exhaust. No, oh, I'm sorry. Intake is 1.329. And for the brakes and scrap them, I mean brakes and stratton. Sorry. Wow. 1.24. So yeah, definitely a little smaller on the valve side. Valve size. We'll do the exhaust valve just for for funsies. 1.157. Wow, 1.8, 1.08. So yeah, your valves are definitely, definitely a little bit bigger on the Kohler. Just for sake of argument. Now see, look at this. This, this head was off a of vertical. This one was off, or sorry, off a of horizontal shaft engine. This one was off a of vertical. But make sure my eyes aren't deceiving me here and I'm not missing any. But there is hardly any breathability through this head on the bricks. That's where the Kohler, yeah, you don't have any holes going straight through, but you got more fins. I mean, you got more cooling. I'm having a hard, hard time finding a reason why you would ever want to go with a Briggs and Stratton engine, at least with the Intec engines. Now, pause button right here. The Intec engines pale in comparison to the quality of the Vanguard engines. If you get yourself a Briggs and Stratton Vanguard engine, scook them. Built really, really well. I, I have never had a Vanguard engine that has died, seized up, or thrown a rod because, or just on its own. It's always been of customer neglect 
not enough oil, um, just poor vent, poor cooling. Didn't check the check underneath the blower housing to make sure there wasn't a mouse nest underneath it. But I've never seen a Vanguard engine that let go. If you can get a machine that's got a Vanguard engine or a Kohler engine, get it. You're gonna you're not gonna be disappointed. Okay, sorry. Just weirdly enough, I just looked at my my screen and realized that. Any of you ever seen Doctor No, James Bond movie, the first one that ever came out? Kind of looked like his hands. Anyway, sorry, ADD moment. Let's correct that with some coffee. <clears throat> so, but no, this is I, I've never been able to compare a Briggs head or a Briggs anything with a Kohler or anything. But I, I'm I'm gonna kind of just wrap that up here because this bring everything else in frame. Based on the build quality alone, you're paying, yes, you are paying a ton more for a Kohler. Like the, the repl direct replacement for one of these guys was a thousand dollars cheaper than going with a Kohler anything and like even if the if we went with a 7000 series which is cheaper than the command series for Kohler we were far far cheaper with a Briggs and Stratton and it shows the quality of work the quantity of metal the thickness of metal it, uh, it I'm almost speechless it, you just got you have so much better quality of and so much better of a product with the Kohler than you do the Briggs and Stratton. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a rather long one, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to keep up with what I'm working on in the shop. I'm not like a aftermarket guy. Like the, like I do tinker with mini bikes, go-karts here from time to time, but this is kind of, this is my, this is my job. So if there comes a time where I don't put out any content, that's probably because I got a lot of customers in the door. So thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the, in the next video. Check in, check out my TikTok for brief videos of what we're doing. More at Service and Repair, both on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So we cleared all the parts off the, off the bench here, ungloved now too. But I wanted to say that this is not... A hate on Briggs video. That's not what this was. This is, Briggs builds some good quality engines, but what I wanted I wanted to do is I wanted to just do a side by side comparison, showing here's Kohler, here's Briggs. Make your decision. So, my recommendation: if you can get a machine with a Kohler on it, get a Kohler on it, or get a Kohler on that machine. Um, I know a lot of Cub Cadets. You can get Kawasaki Kohler and Briggs and Stratton all, all on the same line. But so thanks so much for tuning in. Check me out on social media. I'm all over the place. Don't forget to drink your coffee like I did mine. And uh, if you like, if you like these videos, but you don't have time to watch the big long ones like this, check me out on TikTok. I usually post a little something weird or fun or quirky over there. And, uh, it's kind of how my brain works. Short, succinct, to the point, or in my brain's case, short-circuiting. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Keep the gremlins out of your engine.